Hey, Tom here from the Rune Testers. In this video, myself and Nick are going to be taking a first look review at the Coros Apex 2 Pro running watch. Let's dive in. Okay, so in this review, we're going to be specifically looking at the Apex 2 Pro running watch. We're also going to be doing a first look review of the Apex 2, so you can check that for comparisons. But I will be referencing the Apex 2 at certain points in this review just for uh, comparative uh, understanding of what the two watches can do and why you might look at either one of those two watches. So the Apex 2 Pro is the newest version of Corus's sort of do it all watch. You can use the Apex 2 Pro for pretty much anything from general training all the way up to ultra marathons, trail runs, and uh, fairly advanced running training and analysis. So let's just jump in and have a look at the specs associated with this watch first of all. It's gonna cost you $499 or 499 pounds. It weighs in at 53 grams, which in comparison to the Apex Pro is a bit higher. So the Apex Pro weighed 49 grams and the Apex 2 will weigh 42 grams. The screen is larger in the Apex 2 Pro, that's 1.3 inches in comparison to the 1.2 inches which you'll find in the Apex Pro and the Apex 2. That also comes with a higher level of pixels, so you get 260 by 260 in this watch as opposed to 240 in the Apex Pro and the Apex 2. There's touchscreen with always on memory LCD, there's a sapphire glass screen which is standard across all of the Apex watches, and there's a new nylon quick fit band which comes with the watches as opposed to the silicon version that came with the previous versions. So let's have a look at the new features that you get on both the Apex 2 and the Apex 2 Pro. You'll get a new redesigned optical HR sensor with wear detection for improved accuracy when aerobic training. There's heart rate variability support, which includes electrocardiogram sensor and HRV. There's a redesigned GPS antenna, which is meant to give 50% higher performance. The button design has been tweaked slightly to make it easier to control, as well as make it easier to operate when wearing gloves. There's a touchscreen, MP3, and music support for future firmware updates. There's Wi-Fi, dual mode, and Bluetooth 5.0. There's a new titanium bezel, which is twice as scratch resistant. There's global offline landscape and topographical maps. Support for all system satellites for maximizing the signal. Global offline map navigation with checkpoint support. There's a blood oxygen sensor that will monitor your status at altitude. And there's a night mode, which turns the watch face on to a dimmed setting, which can last for the entire night, and it will automatically turn off at sunrise. Features that you'll get on the Apex 2 Pro over and above the Apex 2 is you'll get support for all systems dual frequency GNSS chipset that reduces the GPS reflection from steep walls. Uh, you'll also get the larger screen with that 1.3 inch screen. There's multi pitch climbing activity mode and you'll get larger onboard storage. So this is 32 gigabytes this holds so things like music and maps. The battery comparison for the Apex 2 Pro, you'll get 75 hours in standard full GPS mode and the Apex 2 will give you 45 hours. All systems on mode, which includes GPS, QZ, ZSS, GLONASS, Galileo and Beidou. That will give you 45 hours in the Apex 2 Pro. The Apex 2 will give you 28 hours in that mode. In dual frequency and all systems mode, you'll get 25 hours in the Apex 2 Pro. That's not available in the Apex 2. And in daily use and smartwatch mode, you'll get 30 days using the Apex 2 Pro and 17 days in the Apex 2. You also get a number of features that come as standard across the Apex range, things like the compass, find my phone, and control my camera. So that will give you the ability to control uh, various action cameras directly from your watch. Okay, so Nick, we've had these watches for about a week now. Um, done a fair bit of testing in them already. Uh, let's dive in straight away and just start talking about the design of the Apex. To pro, you're gonna to have to correct me at some point. At some point, I'm gonna get those those, wor those words in the wrong wrong order because I keep doing it. Um, <laughs> Apex Two Pro, how how have you found the design of this watch? Well, firstly, on the name, Tom, I wrote like a three thousand word review getting that wrong the other day. I had to go <laughs> and find a replace. Apex Two Pro, um, I think it's a, I think it's a pretty nice watch. I think it's a good looking watch. It's got a nice titanium bezel on there. It obviously it's tried to mimic the look of more expensive watches like the Vertex and the Phoenix and that kind of thing, and it does a pretty good job for the price. Like you know comparing it to the other watch at this price point, the Forerunner Nine Five Five, that's an all plastic design. So yeah, it's got a, quite a nice design. Um, it's a bit 
chunky, sits out quite far from the wrist I found. Um, I think I do prefer the kind of slightly sleeker Apex 2, which is a bit smaller, you lose the screen size, but in general I think it's a, it's a good design, um, it's comfortable, didn't notice it at all, like wearing it while I was sleeping, and on the run it's clear to read, so yeah, no real complaints. The digital, the little digital dial is fine, you just have to get used to it, but at first it's a bit annoying, but you get used to it quite quickly. Yeah, I, I really like the design of the, the, the Apex 2 Pro, I, I was a massive fan of the Apex Pro, the original one, uh, and unlike you, I like bigger, chunkier watches. Uh, got slightly <laughs> bigger arms than you, so um, I, actually, I actually prefer the size of this. Uh, I quite like the look of it. Uh, the dial, yeah, I would say is a little bit of a learning curve, uh, and because I have come back to this watch after testing various other watches over the past few months, I've forgotten how to use it. So when you're like, um, you know, stopping a run and things like that. It, it can take a while to sort of get the, the rule, rules right. One thing I really like about the new design is the uh, the fact that it comes with this nylon strap. Um, yeah. I really like the nylon strap. Although, to be honest, the silicone strap that you got with the previous Apex Pro was one of the best silicone straps or rubbery straps that I tried. Uh, quite, quite often, I'll instantly change a strap out when I get a new watch, but I never had an issue with that. But I do prefer the nylon strap on this version. I also would say quick on a nylon strap. I do like it as well, and it's uh, very quick drying. Like you can, you know, yep. shower or wash the watch after a run, and then put it back on. It doesn't feel slimy on the wrist, so that's that's what you want, really. Cool. Uh, I suppose the only other thing to mention about this is that it does have a slightly larger um, screen size uh, to the mm. previous Apex and the uh, to the previous Apex Pro and to the new Apex Two. It's a 1.3 inch screen as opposed to a 1.2 inch, which is on those versions. It's it doesn't make any difference to the, the size of the watch. It's just basically a bit of the bezel um, is sort of uh, more visible or less visible. Um, so yeah, it doesn't have an impact on, on on the actual size of the watch. So yeah, overall, I really like the design of this watch. Yeah, it's a good screen. I think uh, your 1.3 inch versus 1.2 inch, it doesn't sound much, but it's a big difference. Like between the Apex 2 and the Apex 2 Pro, when you use them side by side, like it's very clear. You don't really miss it if you just use the Apex 2, but when you use both, you do think, oh, that's quite a lot more screen. I can see my numbers a bit more clearly. Yeah, it makes a difference when you're choosing which um, data points to add into your screen. Because mm -hmm. I've been adding eight. No, six. I've been using six on the screen, which is quite a lot to have on a, on a screen. Well, hark at you. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you know, I'm very, you know, when, when you get these sub three marathon times, you need the data, mate. You need that data. Okay, that's, that'll cover us for design then, I think. Let's do an important one now, Nick. GPS accuracy, something very close Ooh. to your heart and something you moan about quite a lot to me. How have you found the GPS Ooh, yes. on this watch? <laughs> have a little moan here, Tom. Um, <laughs> it's got multiband GPS. Now, Coros quite clearly say with their multiband GPS, this is for climbing, you know, when you're up against sheer walls, and that's what's really going to come into its own. But with Garmin in particular, I have noticed the multiband GPS makes a big difference in the runs. Like, it results in certainly less smoothed out corners and less cut corners, fewer, you know, either realistic wobbles when you're on a trail or fewer kind of unrealistic wobbles when you're on the road that kind of thing um so i've been testing the apex pro in multi-man mode against the epix 2 and also the apex 2 in all systems mode and it hasn't performed outperformed the apex 2 in just all systems on mode um i ran out today and did a couple of deliberate loops that i know can be a bit tricky for gps and it yeah it just didn't really outperform previous generation watches um so I would just stick with all systems on mode in this, uh, which is much better on the battery life. And you get, it is a solid GPS before, I'm not saying it's dreadful, it's gonna be as good as most things on the market, but this, as with the Vertex 2, I don't think Chorus's multiband GPS really upgrades your experience. Whereas on the Garmin's, it has quite clearly for me, it is more accurate, you get less, you get fewer smoothed out corners in particular. So this dropped me quite a bit on distance today on the run because it cut every corner on those loops, whereas the Epix didn't and the Apex 2 kind of did a little bit so yeah gps has been basically fine but i'm uh, i'm not seeing the upgrade here on multiband basically how about you yeah so i've um i, I did a race on sunday uh 10k race um in brighton but that was across the coast so there weren't any big buildings around or anything like that and it was it was pretty spot on it was i think it was about 70 meters out by the end of that 10k route and that's a proper uk athletics planned route and it's basically a line that you run along and then you come back along it so there's not a lot of turns in it there's not a lot of room for uh sort of losing um uh, gps accuracy on it so it was pretty spot on for that uh so i had no issues there what i have found with um when i'm running around buildings i have had problems with the pacing which i'm presuming is associated mm. with the gps uh, that it's, it's picking up from it and it, the pacing has been a little bit off for me when i've been running so it 
I'm, it's giving me a pace that I know isn't right. It's sort of calibrating itself. So I have had a few issues with that um, during the runs, but general uh, GPS accuracy, I haven't had any issues, but I've also not done any major big building runs or anything like that. Yeah, I think for me, I think the upshot probably goes here is that if you're looking at upgrading to the Pro over the 2 for multi-band GPS, I probably wouldn't, unless you're a climber, then maybe it makes more of a difference there. Mm. And um, But at the same time, it's not a dreadful watch. You're going to get pretty solid GPS pacing for the most part. But yeah, I was, I was slightly disappointed it, it wasn't a big upgrade. Same same when I had the Vertex. It was, it was good. You know, it's good GPS, but I didn't really see a big jump uh, until I used the Garmin's with multi-band, or even, actually the Apple Watch Ultra is very good with multi-band as well. Okay. So, uh, okay for me, not as good for you. Okay, so heart rate accuracy. Um, have you done much training with this um, that has required uh, interesting heart rate um, management? Have you, um, how has it been for you? Yeah, well, I'm obsessing, I'm obsessive about heart rate at the moment because I'm coming back from COVID and my heart rate's high a lot of the time. So I've been looking at it quite a lot and it's been really good. I have to say, I will say this for the optical heart rate. For optical heart rate, it's been very accurate. Like most of the runs, it's spot on. Um, did some strides today at the end of a run with sharp spikes in heart rate and it caught most of them. It didn't catch one. Um, so overall, I think as an optical heart rate monitor, you could use this to judge your training. I would certainly, if using Corus's Evo Lab analysis, pair a chest strap because they have had a few dropouts. Things like that. Overall, uh, actually, the Apex 2 has been slightly more accurate because I think it's a smaller watch. Generally, I think smaller watches get you better heart rate readings because they sit close to the wrist. But um, for the size and weight of watch, this has been very impressive, I think, on the heart rate. I think for most general runs, I would be happy to use it as a guide. But if you are going to use training analysis from the watch, I would still pair a chest strap. And you can only do that via Bluetooth now, which is a bit annoying. No NT Plus. That used to be available mm -hmm. in the Apex range. Um yeah, I've been Very I've been really impressed with it. Um, I compared it against uh, the Polar H10 strap, um, and it was pretty much spot on with that on a sort of semi interval session. I'm coming. I'm I'm not back into full hard interval sessions at the moment yet, but um, yeah, it looked pretty much spot on to me with that beat. I've I'm also wearing the Garmin Phoenix Six Pro, which as we know is a massive watch, uh, and it, it beat that <laughs> by quite a while. Um, yeah. So it's definitely. Yeah, it was pretty good. I, I, for me, I would be 100% happy with it. I, I don't think I'd, I'd need any more information from, from uh, heart rate. Okay, so we've only had the watches for about a week now. Nick, um, how has the battery life been for you? So yeah, battery life is very good. Nearly always very good with Coros watches. It's a 56%. I've had it on for almost a week now. Um, and I've been running every day kind of around 45 minutes or so with the watch. Uh, the thing with Coros watches, they don't drop really in between um, sessions. And part of that is the way they're set up. So for example, it's automatically set to only take a heart rate reading every 10 seconds outside of your workouts and at night. So heart rate variability is done like on demand. It's not reading that all night and giving you a number. So that's why you might see things like Garmin and Polar watches drain a bit faster in between training sessions, whereas the chorus will just basically stay at the percentages at until you run again and when it will drop a bit. But yeah, I think you can easily see a couple of weeks of use out of the Pro 2, um, the 2 Pro, uh, even if you're training quite intensely. Uh, but you can, you know, if you want to set the heart rate to real time in between those training sessions, you, you're going to see a little bit more battery drop off, but it's still going to be very impressive. How about you? Yeah, very good. I I, I haven't actually charged it. When I, when, I, when I got it out of the, the box, it was at 85% and uh, that was six days ago now, five, five, six days ago, and it's dropped to 45 now. And I've been running most days, gym, uh, and fiddling about with it quite a bit as well, like updating it and playing <laughs> around with various features and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it falls in line with what I'd expect. Um, and, yeah, it's definitely going to last you uh, at least a couple of weeks. Okay, so one thing that's been added to the Apex uh, 2 Pro, which is quite useful and interesting, is the navigation features that you get within... Um, uh, over and above what you got previously. Now, the Apex Pro did have an update that came around over, I can't remember when it was, a few months ago, there was an update to include yeah. uh, mapping functionality in it, but it was a little bit ropey. Um, and it, <laughs> I remember using that feature and you had to download the individual maps that would then be added to uh, by, by plugging in the, the watch um, and it would take ages and there was a limited space on the, the, the Apex Pro so it was a little bit fiddly and I ended up playing around with it quite a bit but the other issue I had with it is it took ages to load so um, I, I couldn't yeah. really use them this has got uh, actual navigation features there's maps built into it there's off offline maps which you can use how have you found this navigation uh, these new navigation features in it? 
Yeah, it's been a lot. It's a lot smoother to use certainly than when they first introduced it with the Vertex Two. It's just, the maps are just you know, well, when you put a route in, they'll just pop up straight away. Um, but there are still kind of the same limitations actually to what we had on the Vertex Two. I was hoping Chorus would have advanced this a bit more. So you have got a color map, but it's not really a, the route. If you put in a route, for one, the map only comes up if you put in a route. You can't just have a map screen on your run, which is annoying. I like you know, I just want the map there and I can see my trail on any normal run. Then if you do put a route in, it's just laying the route over the map. It's not you know inserting it into the map so you're not getting turn by turn direction you will get an alert if you deviate off the course but you're not getting turn by turn direction so it's essentially a breadcrumb trail but instead of putting it on a blank background it's putting it on a map which does make it obviously better and more useful for you know navigating but it isn't of the standard of what you get from garmin's mapping services for sure where you're going to get really in-depth detail into the actual route with things like climb pro analyzing every climb and that kind of thing and turn by turn direction so i think it's good it's a good feature uh it's just it's not one that I think is a killer feature, uh, and I was very, I love maps on the Garmin watches, and it's, I'm just waiting for Coros to really you know, upgrade these navigation experiences. You do get an elevation profile of your route, which is quite cool, um, but again, it's not breaking things down for you. It's, it's not as smart and as developed as Garmin, which makes sense because it's been around for longer, all those features, and obviously they had all the sat navs and stuff like that. But at the moment, you know, if you're getting breadcrumb navigation on a cheaper watch, more it's not far off the experience of these maps in my opinion um but they are a bit clearer to read i think now than they used to be i don't know if you oh yeah definitely <laughs> yeah i found them really hard to read previously not <laughs> not just because they tend to take so long to to load on the screen but also they were they seemed a bit like blurry to me like they were, there's no like yeah. detail to the maps and when you're used to using the garmin maps which are essentially road maps um that, if you're using mm. you know in a city city uh, centered mapping location um but i think for me they're they're fine for off-road so if you're doing trails and there's only two trails that you can choose and you can kind of quite quickly yeah. go well i know which one it is but when you're in a city and you're mapping out a city the garmin one is fantastic for that because it, it's using the streets to do it. it you can really sort of find your way around whereas this yeah i, I end up going down the wrong road so many times uh, using this mapping feature that it's just not specific enough for certain type of runs i think it is a lot better I think it works to like it, it's it's a proper mapping feature now, but yeah, there's a bit of space uh, to to sort of get it up to the level of what Garmin have got. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I yeah, I do think they'll improve it. Of course, they're quite good on this kind of front, but I was hoping you know it's been a while since the Vertex came out that it might be a little bit better than it is, and it's and it, yeah, like you say, it's still not it's, it's still not the clearest thing to do. Like th those two forks thing in the forest, that's exactly you know what it is useful for. Like because with breadcrumb trails, that can mm. be hard sometimes when you just got a blank background. But yeah, it's adding context, but not really giving you full directions yet. Okay, so we talked around the sort of main areas where uh, the Apex 2 Pro has seen some modifications and updates to it. How, what, what are your initial thoughts? After a week of using this watch, what are your initial thoughts on it, Nick? I think it's a really good sports watch. I think it's a great sports watch. It basically, for me, would be the. I definitely would go for this over the Vertex myself uh, because you know it has all those key features that you get on the Vertex, but it's not as rugged. But I don't need it to be too rugged. It's still plenty rugged for my life. Um, and I think you know it is a pretty good upgrade on the original Apex in terms of adding things like the maps and bigger storage and a few other useful features. And the battery life is obviously very impressive. Um, I think. The struggle I have with it is that there's a couple of two watches out there that I think I'd immediately say I'd get instead. One would just be the Apex 2, because I don't think, you know, the longer battery life on the Apex 2 Pro is great, but it's still pretty good on the Apex 2. Um, and then at the same price, there is the Garmin 4 on a 955, and this is just a better watch, I think. Unless you want the better battery life in the Chorus, yeah, because this, the 955 lasts me about a week, whereas this will last two weeks comfortably. And obviously you're getting a titanium bezel, which you don't get on the 955, it's an all plastic watch. Other than that, the Garmin kind of beats it across the board for me. Like the mapping features are much better developed. The music on this watch is much better developed. You can link up to streaming services. Training analysis is pretty much par, but this has got training readiness, which is a really, well integrated stat into the Garmin ecosystem that takes into account lots of things and uses things like HRV. Like again, Chorus has put HRV on this watch, but it's just kind of there. You can kind of take the test and it's not really a very useful practical feature. You have to kind of remember to take the test every morning. Whereas again, Garmin's just firing at you, your training readiness having measured it all night long. It's it's just a more developed watch from years of experience. And you know, that's fair enough. Chorus is doing really well as a young company and it's gonna keep developing. But at the moment, if you're coming in at the same price, the 95 it just I think just outclasses it on so many key features. So unless you really need that battery life or love this design and want that Harley design, it's hard to recommend the Apex 2 yeah. Pro for me. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I've used the Apex Pro for a couple of years now and I, I think that's a fantastic watch. I think it's really yeah. nice. I think it looks great. 
Um, I definitely put it as one of the upper echelon of uh, those sort of mid to high level watches. It's, it does everything you want, but I've been using the Garmin 4 and a 955 for the past six months, done the marathon and loads of races in it. Absolutely love that watch for what it does. So I, I think the thing with the, the, the difference between Garmin and Coros for me at the moment is that Garmin's uh, interface and how it actually gives you access to all of these different training tools and inf advice and things like that are very neat. You don't really have to think about it too much. You get that information very readily. With Coros, you have to put more effort into finding out what those things are and finding out why they're useful. It gives you the information, but doesn't really explain why. Um, so I think it's very close to getting there and it's getting all the right parts together, but it's still just not quite there for me. So when you're hitting a you know around 500 pounds and in the UK, we're sort of, Mm. taking the brunt of um our, the pound at the moment <laughs> so it's get it's a bit more expensive but when yeah. you're hitting 500 pounds just the garmin 945 just gives you more for that money than what you'll get from the apex um 2 pro and it's sort of i think with with coros the thing that coros always does better is or has done in the past with things like the pace uh, too is that it it's an, a fantastic watch but it undercuts the competition and then you suddenly get a great watch that's a bit cheaper than what you get from the other ones that's why i'd buy the pace too but if you're if it's the same price yeah. as the, the, the 955 then suddenly it makes it a far easier watch to, to make a decision on because you go well actually i'll just go for the one that you know has, has got a lot of the features it's bit baked in in an easier way yeah i guess it's, it's one of those ways where they've kind of like they have undercut the garmin in the sense that they're using more yeah. expensive materials but if you're not really focused about materials like we're not um generally i think it's fair to say then you know on features it's certainly the case that the garmin would yeah. be the one to go for i also think sometimes of course they make updates to the watches um and this isn't really a critique it's just that they're not really obvious updates so when you popped on the 955 you know readiness is right there throwing look this is a new thing on this watch whereas compared to the apex pro there are some you know big updates under the hood and that kind of thing but your day-to-day -day experience maybe it doesn't change that much. So there is still a case actually if you're looking at the original Apex Pro, if you can sort out the maps on it and make mm -hmm. them less yeah. annoying. Um, so yeah, I think it is a bit of a cool. I think it's, it's, it's like I said, it's a really good watch, but it's come with a big price jump on the previous generation and it is going straight up against what I think is probably the best pound for pound watch on the market in the 955 in that you're getting all of the Phoenix and Epic features in a much cheaper build. So that makes it very hard to be competitive because it is just such stiff competition. And I do really like the Apex 2 as the slightly smaller watch that has yeah, like yeah. the same stuff. Uh, the other thing I would say about the Apex 2 Pro is that I do think there's, a, there's another side of this as well, which is it is it is a simpler watch. It's designed in a simpler way. There's not as much to do on it. There is stuff in there which you can get to if you want to. So for some people, that might be a bonus, just having a really good, hard-wearing, yeah. nice-looking watch, which they can use for long-distance trail runs and battery, good rate battery life and stuff like that. So for some people, that may actually be a bonus. We're, we're, we're the sort of people that want all the information, we want all the details, we want all those features. Yeah. But yeah, some people watching this might go, actually, I don't want all that stuff and I won't use it. I want a nicer-looking watch. Because it is a nicer-looking watch, isn't it? It's got a lot more... Um, it's, it's a lot yeah. more to it. Although the one thing I would say is that there's not many watch faces available for this watch at the moment. Yeah, yeah. But the Apex 2's got more, way more watch faces. Yeah, that has, yeah. I don't know if it might be a size thing. It'll probably be adjusted yeah. sooner. But I suppose that is one way to look at it. It's like if you want a watch with a titanium bezel from one of the big brands, this yeah. is the cheapest new one like that. Like, But I suppose the argument there might be, what well, could you get a deal on the yes. Phoenix 6, uh, <laughs> which has better maps yeah. still if you get the 6 Pro that kind of thing but that said the Phoenix 6 Pro I think did have very unreliable GPS having used it for yeah, two years well, it was I'm, I'm still using it and it, it, it has moment. is, is <laughs> unreliable <laughs> cool uh, so yeah I think it's a great watch uh, it's a great problem is all the lots like I say lots of our reviews ago yeah these, this is a great product if we just still think there's something better out there then that's going to make it uh, tough okay. to recommend it Okay, so that's it from us. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from latest road and trail shoes, as well as running headphones and watches out at the moment. Don't forget, we've also got our monthly podcast that comes out at the end of every month. If you go into the caption below, you can find a link to the latest podcast uh, from the podcast provider of your choice. Thanks a lot for watching.